Okay guys, you know what time it is. It's test time. Back to work. First thing we do is iron down the center here, all the way, start in the middle and go both ways. Once we get locked down, then we can pull on it and stretch it, and we'll heat it on. We'll put this side down first, but we just go across the top and get it all glued down here, and that way the whole sheet's locked down where it's supposed to be, hopefully.
just wanted to show you if I can some of the this is just a pre-glued down with the heat gun get out of the light you can see the wood grain in the still showing through uh, you can still see the paint underneath that roughed up area that's the paint and here is the one that I just got done it almost disappears uh, that really allows the glue that's as close as I can get and really this is it right here right, right here you can't you can't even see it it blends away it's uh, the wood grain and the glue both pretty well disappear out of it after working it with the here again let me show you a couple of these that haven't been done so you can see the you can definitely see the glue underneath there from the heat gun and just the pad where we just put it down at the recommended temperature and then you're supposed to come back with the iron and I think you could turn your heat gun up probably and rub these out but the, the rubbing here these have been done you, you just can't really see it I mean it's it just really it just goes away we'll continue on putting these down I'm just making slow slow passes up and then it tells you to lean to one side just a little bit and that way you're putting it down on the edge of your wooden wing spar I mean wooden wing rib then I go up the other side the third pass I'm leaning to the right a little bit putting it down the right side of the wood spar and now I'm flat level again coming back coming back down with nice pressure that's all there is to it really seems to really seems to do a nice job okay it's hard to do this with one hand so okay guys show you one mistake we made here that you need to try this not to these metal pieces go in under the fabric before you put the top fabric on and they will go on here nicely like that but if you're on the back side trying to get them on if you can't do this little side maneuver you can't get over this piece here so we had to cut we had to cut the end out of one right here and here to get it mounted on the back side and it gets glued in place it's a stiffener that goes around around where the struts hook to there there's one on one goes down there also it's just a half of one because you have your fiberglass uh, lead, liquor leading edge already there so when you get ready to cover be sure and put this piece on before your covering goes on and then you can always get your glue be sure I'd go ahead and scotch bright it and everything get it ready to glue and then you can hold the fabric up plenty far enough to get some glue in there and let it set up and then you can glue it on otherwise you'll be cutting the end of it out here so it will slide on there all right I put this uh, I wrap my top covering all the way to the end of the liquor leading edge and the reason I did that uh, my friend Lauren Voigt from Alaska up there he's got a YouTube channel also uh, he ran his all the way up here and I thought that really looked nice so I thought why not it's just a little extra fiber you only have to lap four inches so your a lot of the laps would stop here but then when your top comes over the top of it you have a seam showing here and then of course you have the plastic uh, or the fiberglass liquor leading edge here it's going there's going to be a line here too I mean they're not really that obvious or anything but 
I just thought that looked nice. When he got his done, it was really, really a nice slick finish. So I kind of copied him on that. He's been helping me, giving me lots of advice. Uh, Dustin from Utah, he's been helping me. Uh, guys are really helpful, the guys that have built these already before me. Uh, when you ask questions on the forums, you, you get plenty of answers. I've been following the book. Uh, Oratex has their book. Been going with it and then, then, let, then using the advice from these guys that's already done it to help you out. And just like you saw a while ago in the uh, fast forward section there, I used a, a iron on one of these and I used a heat gun on the other. Uh, I personally like the iron better on the fiberglass. Now when I got on over here to the to the bottom, as you came over with your iron uh, from the top side here and as you started down, the material heat shrinks on the way so you start getting these ripples and of course I had my son pulling on the bottom of it and uh, you still get wrinkles but the iron if you ever iron a wrinkle it's there I mean it don't come out so we put the iron away when we got to that point we had to use the heat gun because then you can heat the material and shrink it ahead of you so we had to do that to finish up with. None of this has been uh, shrank yet. You run uh, you have to when you get done this heat heat tightening, that's the last thing you do. After your glue sets up good, I'm gonna let mine set for a couple days. Uh, probably wait till I put the top on. And then you heat it up to 230, between 230 and 274. I'm not sure why you do, you know, why it wouldn't be a set number there, but it gives you a pretty far range uh, for tightening the fabric up. So I'm going to do a little more researching on that. But it shows you here using a heat gun. Well, I guess you can use either one. I would think you'd want to use a heat gun on this, uh, and it shows you a pattern how to run it back and forth. I think the iron goes to 320 degrees as a top on it. So of course the heat gun will go a lot higher than that. But your your iron is touching the fabric where your heat gun is not. So you take a chance. You always take a chance on, I mean they have a covering on the iron. Excuse the junk. They have a covering on the iron that's supposed to be a non-marking covering. I've scratched it there. You can see a couple of scratches in it, but but you're still rubbing. You know, you're actually touching, physically touching the material where a heat gun. You're not. You're getting ready to go in, but I had enough time left. Anywhere you cut a hole in the material here, you have to make a reinforcement patch to go around that. So I've cut some of those out while ago, just like here on these two places here. Uh, you'll reinforce that, you'll double that up. It gets glued on the fabric just like you glued the bottom and this one's the same way. And of course you'll heat shrink and glue it down it just pretty well disappear into the, you know, they're both the same color. This is a thinner material that the patch is, but same color, so I mean it, it'll, it'll hardly show. And then we've got, uh, we've got these this metal piece that I forgot to put in last time, <laughs> we got it in here this time, and it's all glued, and I've got the popsicle sticks to hold it and the fabric apart from each other. Before we put them in there, while we made these, I cut out about a half a dozen of these. I need four, so I cut out a couple of extras, but then they will go, after the metal is put on here, the reinforcement patches will go over the outside here on those. So, getting along pretty good on the wings. It's uh, nothing but lots of time. Take your time. Don't get in a hurry on nothing. Uh, 
have some help. That's the main thing. I'd hate to try to do that by myself because you need a lot of pulling and tugging and trying to keep it keep it ahead of you. It does shrink a lot. I mean, you could get, I don't know how big of a ripples you could get before it was a problem, but the biggest thing on, on the Laker leading edge is air bubbles. And on the other wing, I, I used a heat gun. And I did get all the bubbles out. Uh, this one here I used the iron on and it didn't seem like I ever got any bubbles. It really, it really seemed to, you could keep it worked out as you was going. So that's just the way I done it. Don't just do it the way that works best for you when you do it. So I haven't cut out my fuel tank. The next layer will come from the bottom. Uh, it will come from the bottom and of course this makes it all the same thickness here so there'll be no no mark across here when the next layer runs over the top of that. Then I'll cut the fuel tank out of both of them at the same time. But when I have an iron, this, after I cut this edge off, I got to come back with iron and stick it down. But uh, of course, all right. We're putting the top on. We got to put the plumbing in both wings now before electric, little electric, and plumbing goes in. And then I can put the tops on. So that's where we're at on that. And that'll be the next next thing. Then we'll have something that really looks like a wing. See you next time.